Hi, my name is Xi Yuan. I'm your speaker. And uh, today we will be talking about how to exploit the DeFi project. This project is done in collaboration of uh, Certic with UC Berkeley. So since last year, there has been so many hacks uh, to the point that if currently someone tells you, you know, XXX swap has been uh, hacked, you wouldn't be so surprised. You would say, that is Wednesday, it's DeFi, right? So in fact, we did a little calculation. We collected the data from 16 past hacks in the in, in year 2020. And we found that in those 16 DeFi hacks alone, there was, a, there was an astonishing 194 million US dollars of capital loss. And uh, we briefly, to you know, to study those attacks better, we briefly segregated those uh, sixteen attacks into three categories. The first one is arbitrage, in which, which comprises of two cases and uh, only zero point three percent of the total capital loss. So by arbitrage, we mean, uh, for example, the USDC and Dai spot prices different on curve of five than some you know attacker. Uh, profits from arbitraging those two different stock prices. The second category is insecure implementation, which comprises of five cases and uh, a total of 27% of the total capital loss. So this is, you know, mediumly uh, severe. So by insecure implementation, we mean things like reentrancy caused by inclusion of ERC-777 tokens and uh, uh, for example, the LANF.me hack happened in April it was due to this kind of uh, uh, reentrancy attacks. The third category is financial models, which comprises of uh, nine out of the 16 cases and the most amount of capital loss, uh, something 72%. So by financial models specifically, we mean Things like the interplay between bonding curve and constant product AMM, you know, those uh, hacks that arises from the complexity complexity of DeFi money Lego. So in this work, we specifically focuses on financial model attacks, primarily because you know, first of all, they comprise seventy two percent of the capital loss, so they are most impactful. And the second reason is because arbitrage is healthy for the whole for the whole. Uh, flow of the DX environment and insecure implementations have already been well studied by past works. So during auditing, many existing tools can already catch them, but none of the existing tools can check for financial models on this. There has been no prior work. So the motivation of this talk is to first answer the question of what is the DeFi exploit? Can we formalize the concept of it? And uh, the second one is how can we efficiently find the exploits of DeFi projects? For those of you uh, familiar with programming language terminologies, the first one is the spe specification problem and the second one is the verification problem. So what exactly is a DeFi exploit? We want to give a short answer in English, which you know, can, effectively, can effectively be captures the idea of uh, the difference between an exploit and an arbitrage. So we say that an exploit is an action that damages the health of the entire ecosystem by taking advantage of DeFi protocols, financial models. What do we mean by that? Well, the long answer, a more refined concept using some terminologies that we define, you can read the meet number paper is that uh, an action uh, an exploit is an action that can profit risk freely from a series of uh, interactions with sensible states of DeFi protocols, damaging the interest of reasonably knowledgeable users, even though everybody, you know, all of the traders act rationally. Uh, so we will, we will explain what we mean by sensible and uh, reasonably knowledgeable by using uh, a more formal mathematical definition. You can see the method mathematical definition in our paper for here, we are just gonna include a, uh, an intuitive diagram. So for you, uh, what exactly we mean is that uh, if there is a pre-exploit state, which is derivable from an arbitrary number of sensible 
uh, block transitions from the initial DeFi protocol state where the hacker has an asset uh, of Chi one. And then after this state, the hacker takes an arbitrary number of transactions. For example, if he takes transaction number one and in transaction number one, he interacts with the DeFi protocol through functions number one, number two, number three, yata, yata, yata. And then uh, after this, for example, another trader takes transaction two and then another trader takes transaction three. And after those arbitrary number of transactions and arbitrary number of blocks, we finally reach an exploited state where the hacker has an asset of chi two. And uh, if in this state, chi two is strictly greater than chi one, that means that if we reason symbolically, uh, statically of those uh, hackers uh, operations that chi two is definitely greater than chi one, then we say that here we have an exploit of the DeFi project. So uh, we refine our previous uh, diagram description with uh, those, you can see blue and orange boxes. The orange box means a sensible state. For example, we say that the pre-exploit state and the exploited state have to be sensible in the sense that uh, in those states, the spot price of all of the assets in all of the D axis and the C axis are the same. So there exists no simple arbitrage opportunities. And uh, also all of the under collateralized uh, positions of every trader should be either recollateralized immediately or that they have been uh, liquidated. And then we further restrict the behavior of other traders Namely, here you can see uh, if transaction two and transaction three are taken by other traders, then we say that those traders need to take those transactions uh, with um, reasonably knowledgeable um, you know, property and they have to act rationally. By reasonably knowledgeable, we mean that those traders know that they uh, know how to do simple arbitrages. For example, uh, they know that if they trade some, uh, if they want to dump some asset on Uniswap and they created an unfavorable price and they know that they should arbitrage themselves immediately in the same transaction to avoid the minor front running them. So, yeah. But uh, using those uh, formal definitions, how can we efficiently find those exploits? Here we come to the verification problem. The ideal sign is definition that we defined uh, in the previous slide is hard to express and uh, check fully automatically. So for example, how do we encode the idea of reasonably knowledgeable uh, traders? You know, uh, how educated an investor should be is disputed. Moreover, some people think that code is law, you know, smart contracts is the, is the correct governance on blockchains. So this is very disputed. And the second reason is that how do we constrain every arbitrary user to be ma maximum ra maximally rational? This involves some model agent mo modeling, which is also hard to verify automatically. The third reason is that arbitrary transactions across arbitrary blocks doesn't specify minor behavior. So this adds an extra layer of non-deterministic behavior since we need to uh, consider how smart the miners are to consider the minor extractable values. So uh, facing those uh, problems, we propose another uh, definition of what a DeFi exploit is, namely the case on this of DeFi protocol. Here we make three refinements. The first one is that the hacker only takes K steps in each transactions. So uh, for example, in here, the hacker takes transaction one and then in transaction one, he, instead of taking an arbitrary number of uh, uh, interactions, for example, calling function one through function n and it's unbounded with the DeFi protocol, he can only um, take function one, function two, and function three if k equals three. So the se second refinement we make is that we start from a randomly generated state. This allows us to use fuzzing techniques instead of uh, uh, <laughs> having to model what a derivable, what a sensible derivable state from the initial state is. So you can see here, we just directly start from the pre-exploit state. 
The third refinement is that we say that no one else interacts with the DeFi protocol except the hacker. This alleviates the uh, burden of the proof checker so that it does not have to consider minors deterministic, uh, non-deterministic behaviors or you know, other traders knowledge and stuff. So this corresponds to with a very well-known uh, class of attacks, namely the flash room attacks where the hacker can borrow an um, um, unbounded number of money within one transaction. So you can see here, we, can, we this diagram shows that only the hacker takes transaction number one and immediately that we calculate his asset kind too. So using the using case on this, uh, we built a DSL that can automatically extract financial models from existing DeFi projects for model checking, uh, bonding model checking. So uh, the reason we use the DSL is that it allows us to add annotations to guide the model checker, uh, so as to you know make the make the check faster. And the second reason is that it allows us to focus only on the slice program instead of the whole, you know, for example, tens of thousand lines of solidity code, uh, where probably, you know, the uh, asset pricing mechanism is hidden in some white paper footnote. So the exact workflow of our DSL project is that it first takes an, um, a manual annotation of the DeFi pro project in Solidity. We model that in DSL and then uh, our DSL will automatically extract the financial model into model checking for uh, in the tool Euclid 5, which is developed in East Berkeley. And then the model checking tool will do bounding model checking and finally to check if the financial model satisfies the K soundness property. If it doesn't, then it create, prints the exploit, and the exploit tra trace to exploit the DeFi project, or you know, it says that it satisfies the K soundness. So for example, here is a simple um, function written in our, finan written in our DSL the main function in Uniswap. And here is a snippet of the extracted uh, model in Euclid 5. So we did a little case study. So specifically, we studied the BDX hack on the inquiry liquidation check on February 15th last year, which cost uh, uh, you know, close to $1 million USD capital loss. And uh, so that attack was because the uh, liquidation check on BDX is incorrect. The use, uh, the hacker opened a short position. His positions should be li uh, liquidated uh, when he attacked the, uh, when, when he manipulated the pricing oracle, but uh, it didn't. So the hacker was able to cap his position and profit greatly. So specifically here is one of the, uh, the snippet of the solidity function of EDX. And here is a trace that our uh, DSL automatically prints to you know, ex exploit the project. And uh, finally, we currently have this DSL used in industry specifically uh, in CERTIC we do uh, auditing business. And um, for example, here is a, a case study on algorithmic stablecoin protocol. This was an actual funding during auditing using this tool. So specifically in their stablecoin protocol, they have this um, bond, uh, bond token, which should be uh, uh, which should be exchangeable with the uh, actual share token, but the exchange ratio is wrong. So the hacker was able to create money out of thin air by using the, those uh, bond token redeeming mechanisms. So, uh, and then finally, we are building a smart contract library of all the popular projects with, uh, with a total value locked greater than $20 million. So this already really is uh, I would say almost uh, in the entirely the, the entire DeFi landscape. I think it covers currently more than 30, 35 billion US dollar TVL. So uh, that, that's because most of the projects are just uh, forks and copies of each other. For example, pancake swap and uh, sushi swap. So that was our uh, work. 
thanks for listening. And uh, Sir Tate is also hiring for this kind for this project and more. <laughs>